time to practice what I preach. <laughs> this is my Phalaenopsis cornucervi, and well, she has risen out of her pot. The oldest part of the stem, well, you can see how much she has grown since she's arrived in my collection in 2018. But before we get into actually taking her out of the pot, I want to make sure that I've got all the roots that are circling the perimeter of the pot that I release those. And yeah, the idea is to get her back into the same size pot with all the roots that were circling around the perimeter of the pot into the pot, possibly do a stem cut. Not entirely sure how far I'm gonna go with that. And the reason I can do this now is because she is in active root growth, meaning that my velamen should be nicely adapting to what is a wetter environment because these were surface roots for the longest time. I'm a little apprehensive to know what I'm going to find in the pot, to be honest with you, because we've had two winters that weren't to her liking. And the last winter of 22-23, I lost two spikes. She had four in total. I lost four leaves as well in rapid succession. So <clears throat> I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. But as I continue to release this orchid, I hope you will already give this video a like and please subscribe to the channel. If you aren't already subscribed, that would be awesome to have you on board. Now I hope to see you after the intro. She is so loose in the pot. <laughs> loose as in the stem is already dislodged. It's so good to have you on the other side of the intro. Thank you for staying here. I appreciate that you are keeping me company and oh, look what's going on. We have a little bloom. Oh, she bloomed so beautifully in 2022. But when you lose spikes, what can you do? She hasn't grown another spike yet either. But anyway, let's get her out of the pot. I think I'm gonna have to change the camera angle. Or maybe not, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I can just lift her out of the pot. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Maybe not. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. The cold winters are definitely not summer blooming foul conducive, I can tell you that much. I have a beautiful branching root tip right tucked back in there that I'm keeping an eye on. Just so happens a lecker bead is attached to that. I've got an active root tip somewhere on the branching on the exterior, so we'll be watching those as well, but my saving grace are these roots right here. That's why I want her a little bit lower in the pot, get them into the media as soon as possible. I'm not too discouraged. Woo! Not too discouraged. I'm liking what I'm seeing, considering everything. Oh! My panic stations with the summer blooming fowls during the winter are off the charts. It would be absolutely wonderful to salvage the bloom, just in case, you know? You never know when you're gonna lose an orchid, the next winter is coming, so I'm just like, oh, trying to enjoy what I've got. So I'm just trying to see if I want to cut the stem, remove some of the dead roots that are higher up. She looks like a bit of a Medusa. Now, Cornucervi is not shy when it comes to growing roots, thankfully. Thankfully, she's not one of those summer blooming fowls that's finicky about root growth. She's one of the prettiest ones when it comes to root growth, next to the pulchra, in my opinion. The stem is quite, let's say, it's not soggy, but it's, it's soft enough for me probably just to twist it off if I can avoid making a cut. I don't want to snap any of the roots that are attached at the top at the base. And once you kink that little juncture, that little joint, it's almost like, you know, you're asking for trouble. Anyway, I had to cut that off and I get a little bit more of all these bracts off. That is the question. Not that I'm concerned about having the stem in an environment that is more damp than where it's, you know, grown up and out of, but what I'm concerned about is mealybugs. This orchid is a mealybug magnet. And I believe that it was mealybugs that also took out my two spikes and all the leaves. But, you know, thankfully, 
mealybugs are easy to deal with as opposed to scale. So it's not scale, which is awesome. Super important because scale is something that I have to deal with with all my fowls. We'll put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide right there. I don't think it's mold, but I don't care what it is. It's not going to be around that much longer. Not too shabby, hey? Not too shabby. This gives me hope for the future. As long as I can keep her safe, <laughs> keep doing what I'm doing during the winter, trying not to keep the roots too wet, but not letting my lecker dry out. This is not too bad after two winters of adversity. You can see the root tip here extending when it touched the base of the pot. I wonder if I can salvage that when we repot her. There's more root tips extending on all the other roots as well. And also this one here that was kind of a surface root around the perimeter of the pot. It's got an active root tip starting, which is great because I want that one in the pot. And I'm going to have to take a deep breath, <laughs> if I can, to get her back into the new pot, which is the same size. So I'm going to wet the roots down a little bit more, especially like this one here, in the hopes that we won't break it. Let me correct that in the hopes that I don't break it, because if we do this successfully, we did it. If I make a mistake, oh, I done it. <laughs> so we'll just wet that down. The new pot is ready to go with the exception of I have to fill it with some water. Okie dokie. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh. Apprehensive much? Yes, I am. Now with other orchids, you could actually take the roots, twist the pot and get the orchid down lower in the pot. These roots are very, very stiff. They don't really <laughs> adhere to anything with regards to rotation and lowering into the pot. So <laughs> I'm not going to get a bigger pot out. I'm going to make do with what I've got. And I've already lost this root tip. So we've got collateral damage. Quel dommage. That's a shame, but we're going to have to think a little bit along the lines of collateral damage is all part and parcel of repotting. Question is to get the orchid into the pot in such a manner that she can be here for another two years. So oof, my heart is going 100 miles an hour, I can tell you that much. Hate losing roots, but that's how stiff these are. Wow, she's got one heck of a network and that's great because at least she's going to be stable in the pot. I would love to get her a smidge lower. I'm getting, of course, resistance at the bottom because look, isn't that a gorgeous sight? Of course there's resistance. They're obstructing my intentions here in a wonderful way. Normally, normally, if you're in the right climate, I suggest putting this orchid on a mount and just watch the gorgeousness happen with her root system. It's, it's so pretty. I think I've pushed my luck enough stop while you're ahead right but i didn't just mess up that one root tip i'll show you just now what else i messed up with at the beginning i just thought <laughs> i should cut out some dead roots before i unpot her in case they snag yeah i'll get to that full transparency here on the channel the good the bad and the silly let's put it that way silly 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 rookie mistake i better hold my orchid Every root is probably under tension right now and wants to just pop up and go, <laughs> hello. Yeah, no. So I've got small lecker in here just to make sure that everything is nicely hydrated and of course, wetter during the winter, which is not the intention, but I may have a system down that works, at least for this one. Every other one of my summer blooming fells, mm, we're on the knife's edge of whether they'll be around for yet another season. 
I'm going to show you some pictures of all the other ones as I fill this pot up with small lecker just to give you an update on how the other ones are doing. And so far they're still glam camping outside in the deep south annex. He thinks I've got another one or two weeks for that, that I feel safe enough. I mean, I've already got temperatures below 20 degrees at night, but the terracotta is still warming up nicely during the day. So I'm kind of gambling with that a little bit to get away with it. Well, I would say that is mission accomplished. Let me clear my table. Let me drain the orchid and then I'll show you my rookie error. In case I didn't mention it at the beginning, I had her soaking overnight in Epsom salts. And that is far too much water because we've got roots all the way to the bottom of the pot. What she's getting in her reservoir now is about 600 parts per million of my well-balanced orchid specific fertilizer. So we've done the Epsom salt soaks. I don't suggest that you do the overnight soak with Epsom salts. I have a video on that, which I will link in the description. It just ended up being overnight because schedule didn't permit patio activities. So <laughs> 30 minutes would be absolutely plenty for an Epsom salt soak. Anywho, let me show you my boo-boo, my rookie boo-boo, not just the gorgeous root tip. They feel so smooth. You know, I never touch my root tips, but when something like this happens, oh, I love touching root tips. Like not when they're off the plant, but I just don't normally touch my root tips. So, oh, they are so smooth, they're so gorgeous. Wow, but that is an accident. This <laughs> was miscalculation. This was on the stem and it looked dead because I was trimming dead roots off while the orchid was still potted up. And then when I started pulling, <clears throat> this was a beautiful root that was growing on the exterior. Look at it, look at how beautifully it greens up. And that was on the perimeter of the pot. And I just assumed what I saw at the surface was dead. Don't make this mistake, please. I keep telling myself I had a few that I could clearly see were dead. This was an assumption. And if you assume something, you get it wrong. It's a 50-50 chance and it's a waste. Quel dommage. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that there was something in there for you to take on board in your own collection, especially something like this. <laughs> Don't be too mad at yourself if something like this happens. Oh, I know that's a difficult one for me to practice, even though I'm preaching it. But anyway, I appreciate that you watched the video to the end. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I wish you a wonderful day, but there is a condition attached to that, and that is that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.